Welcome to Road to the Draft presented by Raymond James. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. And man, last week was an exciting one when it comes to the mock draft season. A couple <laughs> big trades up there at the top of the first round. So tell me a little bit about what those do, particularly for that first half of the draft. Yeah, there's nothing more fun than draft trades. And it's great when real life draft things intrude on your mock draft. So it was a monumental week thanks to the Miami Dolphins, who traded down from three, a pick they had from the uh, Laramie Tunsil trade with Houston, uh, to 12 with San Francisco. San Francisco, clearly, there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever, is trading up to three to get a quarterback. And then Miami obviously had both of these trades planned out in advance, traded back up to six with Philadelphia, which tells most of us probably that Philadelphia is not looking for a quarterback and will roll with Jalen Hurts this year. And Miami probably moving back up to make sure it can get one of the premier playmakers like Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts or Jalen Waddell. So um, what that did in my mind, I think it's going to be like 2016 when the Rams first traded up for Jared Goff for the first pick. And then the Eagles traded up for the second pick. And all this happened well before draft day. I am of the opinion that after the uh, 49ers pulled the trigger early to move up to three, some other team that wants to make sure it gets the fourth quarterback is going to trade up to probably number four with Atlanta. So I think you're going to see for the first time ever four quarterbacks go in the first four picks. And we're talking about Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Justin Fields in some order, and probably all five of those guys in maybe the top 10. And what that does, I know you're having a hard time. We're talking about the Bucks road to the draft. What does it matter for the Bucks when they're picking 32? Well, the first part of this domino effect is all these teams picking in the top half of the draft that aren't looking for a quarterback are loving what's happening because it's pushing down the top players at, say, wide receiver and offensive line and linebacker like Devontae Smith probably will go a little later. Uh, Rashawn Slater, the tackle from Northwestern, the Penn State linebacker that everybody loves, Micah Parsons. These are guys that maybe could have gone five or six and now might be going nine or 10 or 12 or whatever. So, uh, you know, it's part of a domino effect that's pushing down really good players at non-quarterback positions. Right. And so then there will be another domino effect even for some of those other positions outside of those, namely edge rushers. That'll mean that you're going to go through those first 15 picks with hardly any of those guys potentially being taken. So what could that mean for that next grouping? That's exactly right, Casey. I think that the all those quarterbacks going and then the top prospects at receiver and offensive line are probably going to make it so your edge rushers, which there isn't a lot of consensus on right now as to what order they're going to go in, but it does make it more likely that they will they will be pushed down into the second half of the draft and maybe even far enough down for the Buccaneers to get a crack at one of them that in some years would go 21 or 24 or 25, something like that. You know, I'm talking about guys like George's Aziz Ojolari, um, the two guys from Miami, Jalen Phillips and Gregory Rousseau. Uh, there's not a lot of consensus. I've certainly seen mock drafts and done mock drafts where Gregory Rousseau is in the top 20. And I've seen him where he lasts to the Buccaneers at 32. And I think that's the effect we're seeing of these quarterbacks pushing everything down. So now that everything has been pushed down and hopefully down all the way to where the Bucs are at 32, what does all of this domino effect, all these trades mean for the Bucs at 32? Well, I'm not sure. I'm trying to make a case for it meaning something, but I'm not sure how much it means because uh, I still think, and Bruce Arians really sort of uh, stressed this earlier this week, that the Buccaneers are in the position to take the best player available. And it could be at a position that you and I don't necessarily identify as a huge need right now. But if the value is there because these guys are getting pushed down, uh, it could happen. Like, let's, for instance, Virginia Tech quarterback, cornerback Caleb Farley he was going 11 or 12 in a lot of mock drafts that I saw early on, but he's dropping a little bit because of some injury concerns. And that's a very talented player that maybe could make it to the end of 32. I talked uh, earlier this week about Kadarius Tony, the wide receiver from Florida who could also help you as a return man. Maybe that's a guy the bucks could be interested in. And really to get back to our mock draft roots from three or four weeks ago, Uh, there's probably going to be a pretty good defensive lineman that the Buccaneers could use help depth there like Washington's Levi Anzaruki. So um, there's still a lot of possibilities, but I I do think it looks pretty favorable for the Buccaneers. All right, let's hope so. We are going to be back here next week with another Road to the Draft presented by Raymond James. We'll see what else has been shaken up by then and how it could affect the Buccaneers. We'll see you next time.